to, to, to tell you a little bit about what we're doing um, over in the astrophysics sub-department, part of the Department of Physics, um, uh, trying to figure out what's happening to the universe. So, so I work in the general area of cosmology. Um, there's a lot of us over in astrophysics and in other parts of physics doing cosmology. And the kind of questions that we're trying to answer are, what are the origins of the universe? How has it evolved from its very beginnings through to today? And what's its eventual fate? What's going to happen to it from now onwards into, into the future? And, and what physical laws does it follow? Um, are, are they all things we know already? Probably not. Um, what, what things do we need to still find out? It turns out we can describe the universe, the whole of space, with just a, a handful of numbers or characteristics. And the kind of characteristics we try and work out as cosmologists are you know, how much does it weigh? What's its average density? What's the average density of the universe? Um, what's it made of? If we think about the whole of space, what are the what, what's its contents? Is it made of stuff like us, or is it made of other things too? And what are its initial conditions? Which means, how did it begin? How did the universe we see today, how did it start? So doing, doing cosmology, um, it's not a traditional experiment. Um, we only have one universe, we, we think. We certainly only have one universe that we can see. And we only get one snapshot of it. Um, and so the way we have to do cosmology is we look out uh, into the skies, we make observations, and we have to find a theoretical universe that best matches the one that we see. We can, have, we can endlessly tune the theoretical universe uh, until it might look like the one we can actually see in the sky. But we can only ever look in the sky once. Or we can, we can go and look again, but it's not going to change much in, in our lifetime. Um, <laughs> And, and so the, the benefit we do have is at least when we look out in, into space, we're looking back in time. And so the further we can look out into space, the further we can look back in, back in time. So even though we're just sitting here on Earth making one observation, we can map out, we can try to map out the whole universe. And so this little diagram over here is a little, a little picture showing um, how we can try and understand the universe from its beginnings right through its 14 billion year history through to today, we can have a telescope sitting perhaps in a strange position here, <laughs> out here, that's looking back through through space. And the nearest things it will see are galaxies. Uh, it'll look a bit further and it can see more distant galaxies. If further still, it can see the very first galaxies and the first stars forming. Um, and further still, you get back to a point where you get back almost to the Big Bang itself. And, and that's, what, that's what I do here in Oxford with my team is we look back as far as it's possible to look in the universe. And we look at this light that's called um, the cosmic microwave background, which is light from the Big Bang itself. This is not light from galaxies. It's not light from stars. It's light that's been around since the Big Bang. And so it's light that's, that's been traveling almost for the whole age of the universe. If we look at anywhere in the sky, now, it's hitting us right now, it's been traveling for 14 billion years, and which we think of it as an afterglow of the Big Bang. And we were very excited because earlier this year, we made a brand new, took a brand new picture of this first light of the universe. And this is this, this spotty, spotty picture I've, I'm showing here, um, that what, what this is, is it, it is a snapshot of the universe when it was only 400,000 years old. Just one bit of it. Um, and what you're looking at here, this is a picture made by the Planck satellite, which we're working on here in Oxford, um, with a team of us. Um, it's a European Space Agency satellite, and it's managed to take this picture and see it in much higher definition and a higher sensitivity than ever before. The, the, the temperature, the, the color here um, measures the temperature of this light. Think of this, this uh, oval is the whole sky unwrapped onto an oval on the, on the, on the screen. Uh, the, temper the colors here signify the temperature of the light. Where it's blue, it's ever so slightly colder than average. Where it's red, ever so slightly hotter than average. Um, but these are tiny fluctuations. This, the temperature of this light is almost the same everywhere on the sky. And it's very, very cold. Right now, it's minus 270 degrees. And these are fluctuations of a, one part in a millionth of a degree. And what these are, are the, they're the very seeds of cosmic structure. Tiny ripples in the very early universe 
that would later grow to form giant cosmic structures. The galaxies that we see today started off as these ripples back then. Um, and the reason why it's, we like to look back then, this is the earliest time we could look, is the universe was much better behaved back then. It's much cleaner, less complexity. We're looking at tiny fluctuations, one part in a million. This is linear physics. This means that we can trace through very accurately what could have happened from the Big Bang to this moment. Things got much messier later on when galaxies formed uh, and th things like us formed. We're quite messy to model. But back then, the universe was much simpler to model. So we've taken this picture. This was just back in March. What do we do with it? Well, we have to then, we can then extract information out of it about what the universe is made of and how it began. We do that by taking a characteristic signature from that map. Now, those of us in, um, many people here will be familiar with uh, taking a power spectrum of a map or an, or an image. You're basically saying, how big are those fluctuations or ripples in temperature as a function of scale? Or, more hand-wavingly, we can say, uh, how big are the bumps on that, on that map? And how, how much bumpiness is there as a function of size? So we can, split, we can spread that map into blobs on the map of different sizes, varying from huge blobs on the sky that are you know, 90 degrees round, down to you know, degree-sized blobs, which would be the size of you know, your thumb on the night sky, down to very, very tiny, um, tiny, tiny, tiny ripples on the sky. The reason this is interesting is that this, this, this is the cosmological fingerprint of that map. Every single universe has a different fingerprint, or every, every, diff, every possible theoretical universe. Um, and so by match, you can see that the signature that we've measured with the Planck satellite has this kind of interesting pattern. It's got these, these bumps and wiggles. It's not just a smooth, featureless uh, signature. It's got, it's got real features that you can, you can fit to a model. Um, and so what we do is we tweak the universe model until we find a model that actually matches this one. And so the typical, the, the, the shape of this, this, this fingerprint tells us a number of things. It tells us the geometry of the universe. It tells us the expansion rate, the contents, and the initial conditions of the Big Bang. And so what we do is we tweak possible, we generate thousands, millions of possible theoretical universes until we found this green one. This is a theoretical curve that passes beautifully through all these data points. And these data points have absolutely tiny errors. You can't see them. They're so small on this figure. You know, we tweak the, we tweak the theoretical universe until we find that green curve that fits. And it fits beautifully. And that tells us what kind of universe we've got. Now, that's great. Um, one of the things that Planck has told us this year that we didn't know before is it's given us brand new evidence for what was happening in the very first fraction of a second of the universe. We think something called inflation happened, where the universe expanded exponentially fast in the first trillionth of a trillionth of a second, blowing up a region of space smaller than an atom to larger than the sun in less than a, in less than a trillionth of a second. And by looking at that pattern, that, that fingerprint, we've tuned things around and we've said, yeah, there's, there's really new strong evidence for this having happened. Um, so that's, that's really exciting. We've also got a new estimate of what the universe is made of. And the universe is actually made of pretty weird stuff. So um, if I make a pie chart, which I'm showing here, of actually what space is made of, Stuff that we know of, that we are made of, our bodies and our the planet and stars and the galaxies, is only 5% of the total. The remaining 95% we don't understand yet. And it's made of two things. Dark matter, which we think are invisible particles um, that many people here in physics are, are looking for um, by the LHC and about many other experiments. And this weird other component called dark energy, there's um, almost 70% of it in the universe and we do not know what it is. This is one of the biggest questions now in cosmology and spans a whole range of in, in physics too. Dark energy is stuff that, it's not stuff that we know of. What it could be is the energy of empty space. We think of space, if you've got space and nothing in it, it's got no energy associated with it at all. But actually dark energy 
could be um, the energy that comes just from having a, a box of empty space. It could be the energy that comes along with that. And as space gets bigger and bigger, you get more of it because you get more space. And you get more of this energy. And it's begun to dominate the universe. And what it's doing is it's making the universe's expansion speed up. It's accelerating. Um, and this was just something that, you know, 15 years ago came out of the blue. And we're still trying to figure it out now. We've managed to nail down really precisely. I mean, I haven't got errors on this, but we've got 68.3, and that's precise to about 1%. We know exactly how much of this stuff there is. We have no idea what it is. Um, and that's what, we, that's what we're now all about. <laughs> we have to figure it out. And that's what loads, many, many, many of us are doing here in Oxford, um, is trying to work out, well, not, not only what dark energy is, but also dark matter. The way to do that is... I said that one of the things that my team here does is look at the very first light in the universe because it was simple back then. Now that's true, but to actually get at dark energy, we think that dark energy has been dominating the universe only relatively recently. So to get at it, we actually have to go into the messy stuff and we have to see how the universe has evolved from the beginning to now. Um, and we do that by looking at, looking at how galaxies in the universe clump together um, over the 14 billion year cosmic history from the Big Bang to now. We can look at the distribution of galaxies which are spread out in this cosmic web. We can look at the expansion rate of the universe by measuring bright, very bright distant exploding stars in distant galaxies to measure how far away they are and how fast the universe has been expanding. Um, but we have to map it out. We have to not only look at different cosmic epochs, we have to look at all of it <laughs> um, and try and figure out what this stuff is and try and f just figure out whether it could possibly be a change to gravity that we, we, that we haven't yet thought of. It could be one example. So the kind of things that we're doing um, here are projects that are coming up in sort of, we're talking about 10-year timescales because we have to do really big projects if we want to map out basically the whole of the observable universe, or at least a large proportion of it. So a couple of the, ones, a couple of the projects that, that are happening here are um, the Square Kilometre Array, which there's an artist's impression of this uh, here and here. There's a huge radio telescope array that will be sighted in South Africa and Australia that will be able to map out using, using radio waves um, huge amounts of the observable, uh, observable universe. Um, and um, there's huge amounts of technology involved in that and also data processing. This is big, big data, petabytes per hour of data flowing in from mapping out such huge amounts of the universe. And also the Euclid satellite, um, which will be measuring the positions of galaxies and the distortion of light from galaxies in, with normal optical, optical light. Um, and by combining together many wavelengths and many distances from us, we'll be able to see how the universe is expanding, how it's changed with time, and figure out what on earth this stuff is. So uh, watch this space. <laughs>